the emergence of the former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, as presidential candidate of the Labour Party has surprisingly turned the party into a beautiful bride with many politicians jostling for its ticket. The jostle is not unconnected with the yearnings of Nigerians for a change from old and recycled leaders, especially those who see the Labour candidate as a beacon of hope who will bring about the desired change they crave for in the country. However, the party's tickets, which have now become politicians' delight, have attracted a major crisis as it was alleged that the party's national leadership has swapped the list to accommodate new candidates. Well, joining us to discuss this is Unisat Tanko. He's the spokesperson, National Consultative Front, and, of course, the chieftain of the Labour Party. Uh, Mr. Tanko, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Stephen Nigerian. Great. Um, too many, um, too many things coming up here uh, for the Labour Party. But let's talk about it being that beautiful bride that is being courted as we speak by many politicians. Now, the president had given a pardon recently for two um, former politicians, one a governor um, who was actually in office and siphoned public funds. Um, they did their time, but they were given a presidential pardon. Now, there was also a rumor that he might be seeking a senatorial ticket from the Labour Party. One of, what, this is one of the, let's say, examples of those who are trying to court the Labour Party, seeing it as one of the um, new brides that everybody would want to be part of. And most people would say that this is because of the presidential candidate, uh, Dr. Peter Abi. Um, is it true that the party had swapped its form, uh, or rather, uh, the names on the list that uh, had the previous candidates with INEC to a new one because you want to accommodate new um, ticket holders? Is this true? That's what? Well, we hear that your party had swapped the list of candidates that it had before now for a new one, being that you have accommodated new candidates in the party. How true is this? No, I, I, honestly speaking, as we speak now, technically, there is no room for any substitution or replacement by any. The windows of candidate placement and replacement is closed. So the only thing that can happen for any candidate is if he or she challenge the status quo in the court of law. And the court pronounced shame that so person can be changed. That is the only thing that can happen now. So, so if anybody is sending any kind of false information in the media, I think he's just trying to, to fulfill his all his personal ego. But technically, there is nothing of that been done at the Labour Party. We are preparing for our campaign organization and at the same time making sure that we get down to the grassroots to coordinate our affair because the Nigerian people are already showing so much love for us and we are grateful for the love that they show to us. Let's talk about the the pluses uh, that the Labour Party has right now. Um, how can the Labour Party be certain that those who are somewhat dancing towards it or looking to find a place within the party are not the same that would destroy the party or make it seem seemingly look the same as those political parties that many Nigerians are tired of? We have a very well orchestrated document that will be shared with Nigerian people. These documents are contained from the three documents that were sent in by the Nigerian Labour Congress, the TUC, and then the Manifesto of the Labour Party. These documents will be collapsed into one to fill the needs of the Nigerian people. Now, to answer your question, as regard to people who are coming into the party. Yes, we recognize that people have changed from their old attitude trying to come into the Labour Party. But the only guiding principle that will lead us aright is those documents that I mentioned. The Labour Party 
is a social democratic party in nature. It belongs to the people. And the people trying to live to their expectations, we will contain them within the context of the document that will guide the principle and their behavioral aspects. We will tell you for a fact that we are not new in the Nigerian politics. We know that those who will come as a mole, we know those who will come sincerely, we know who will come to blackmail us, we know those who will come in order to create havoc within the system. But we are all prepared for all of this. But what we can assure you is that we are targeted in getting Nigeria back to the Nigerian people. Because the Nigerian people have been deceived for too long and they need leadership that is purposeful, that is accommodating, that is directing, that is ready for leading the people to the right path. And as we speak today, the driver of that particular train that we are ready to move is Peter Obi, with an assistant driver called Marlon Betsy Baba Ahmed. So we are not part of with one wrong element that you may cause, but all of them will be checked in in the right movement in emancipating Nigeria. Let's talk about how well the party has dealt with infighting. I remember the last time you and I spoke, we talked about the um, the factional party chairman who was take, going to court and asking for um, you know fair hearing, uh, saying that. Um, his powers were usurped by um, the Peter Albi led faction of the party. Now, um, have frayed nerves been calmed? Do we see people deciding to work together in the interest of the party as opposed to those who seem to want to continue to get their own pound of flesh? Um, how has the party been able to walk around this? Like I told you the other time we spoke, that such issues are not uh, really something that anybody should be disturbed about. And I guess by now, you should have seen the handwriting of the war. Have you heard anything from that particular case anymore? No, it has gone with the wind because it doesn't have any particular local standard ability. So we are moving forward and we welcome everybody that is interested in rescuing Nigeria. So as we speak today, we have no problem with regard to that particular issue that was raised during that your interview with me. In Lagos State, where there was an issue uh, with um, a particular governorship candidate uh, who said he emerged first as the original uh, governorship candidate and was parading himself as the Lagos State um, governorship candidate uh, before, of course, another you know election was quickly held and um, Wadibo Vivo Roads emerged as uh, you know, the flag bearer of the party. A again, how do we ensure that in the Labour Party these kinds of events don't continuously crop up? In a democratic setting, and especially when a, a new bride is coming up and people are really agitating and loving it, there will always be this kind of festivities uh, from the sidewalk. But we have dealt with it as a, 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 as a common issue, and it has not come up anymore. So anybody that is aggrieved, the internal mechanism of the party will take care of all of these particular matters, which we have done so far. So I guess you should not need to wait for the publication of INEC. Then you will now see the list of the candidates. Even if there are issues, the party will deal with it based on the constitutionality and the electoral act and the provisions of the modus operandi of the independent electoral commission. So as far as we are concerned, we are coasting home. We don't have any internal issues that can be disturbing us that much. But of course, when they come, we will deal, the, we will deal with them decisively. Let's talk about the former... Um chairman, national chairman of the APC and former um, governor of Edo State, um, Comrade Adams Shomale's um, uh, speech, or rather comment about the uh, capability of your presidential candidate to deal with certain issues decisively, especially 
the issue of insecurity. As you and I know, a number of states seems to be facing a, a serious level of insecurity, even with Governor Soludo there. But then your presidential candidate used to be um, the governor of that state, and there was an allegation that he did not necessarily deal with the issue of insecurity well. How, should, how can we tell that he would be able to deal with the one that Nigeria is facing on a national level? You know, there is a saying that uh, if you had a girlfriend or a wife and you do not hold her very well and she becomes attracted to another person and he dress her well and he takes care of her and make her more attractive, the old husband will always come and say, look, is it not this particular person? He will be admiring the beautiful wife who would have found a new husband and looking more formidable and handsomely. That is the situation of Comrade Adam Osimole. We will not want to join it with him, but we want to state on the fact that he should look at his own record, what he has left for the, uh, for the Edo people. He left them debt. He couldn't pay his own salary. He couldn't take care of the people. He couldn't take care of the needs of the people. But he is not taking up an issue with somebody who connects with the people, who build the hospital, who builds roads, who connects with the educational sector, who at the time of his living office, he left nothing less than 74 billion naira, not debt. So how can you communicate with such a person and respond to issues raised by Adam Mashulani? I think both of them are not in the same realm. So we cannot join issue with him, but we just mentioned that. For me to understand that the Labour, some people from the Labour movement are part of the um, Labour Party. Um, of course, there are questions uh, about how much the, the Peter Obi um, ticket would be able to do if he were to be given that position by Nigerians, how he would be able to liaise with Labour. Now, we all know what is happening. Asu is on strike. We know that, of course, doctors are leaving the country in their droves. Um, and lots of things are happening. There's um, insecurity, which is rife. Um, there's oil thefts. Um, I mean, the president, whoever becomes president, um, is, you know, going to have a responsibility that is huge enough or even bigger than the office. So I'm asking, what is the assurance that the, your presidential candidates will be able to deal with these issues decisively, being that Nigeria is bigger than a number? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just precisely last week, there was a retreat being organized by the Nigerian Labour Congress and the uh, TUC, that is the Trade Union Congress. That retreat had in presence the former national chairman of the National Conscience Party, from Premier Salana, a woman rights activist and a lawyer of the Nigerian Labour Congress. That meeting had in presence all candidates of the Labour Party. That meeting has the presence of the Nigerian Labour Congress President Komir Ayuba Waba. That meeting had the presence of Festus Usifo, the new chair president of the PUC, the leadership of the party, Julius Aburi. All leadership of the PUC and the NLC were all there at the retreat. That will show you the direction of what we are trying to do. The Nigerian people, the Nigerian Labour Congress and the TUC are now tired of being used by any political party. They have resurrected their own political party and they are ready to give it the full 100% support. And so you can imagine, if a Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress agree to support their own party, and they have Peter Obi as their candidate, with Deti Baba Ahmed as his vice presidential candidate, leading the progress of Nigeria. Do you, in your widest imagination, ever think that there will be an Asu strike? Or do you think there will be a Pengasus strike? Or do you think that there will be issues of kidnapping and man-napping that is happening? All of these things will naturally fizzle out. Okay. Because the workers will be fully engaged, involved, and directing the affairs of what is happening in governance. Okay. So anything that they have as an issue will be dealt with as a first-hand line of charge. 
So that way, the issue of access strike would not even resurrect itself okay. because the workers are involved, are included in governance of this government. Well, I want to say thank you. Um, Dr. Tanko Yunisa is a spokesperson, National Consultative Forum, and the a chieftain in the Labour Party. Thank you so much for joining us. 2023. All right. Thank you. Well, that's it on Plus Politics tonight. Before I go, I want to give you my take. Here's my take. At times it can feel like our politics is nothing more than a comedy meant to entertain us. The helter skelter of our politicians vying for one political party's ticket after another sometimes may seem laughable, but there is more to it than that. When you think about the disorder that goes on within party primaries, you might wonder if the game weren't already rigged from the start. There's always the line of delegates adamant they would not want to vote a candidate until the eve of primaries and their words have changed. Often we just dismiss this as, you know, sometimes bribed delegates. Of course, there are also those who end up in the third parties once the pass to the major party ticket seems blocked. At times, the stature of such parties may rise as one of these candidates from somewhere wins a significant seat. Yet, there are those unlucky parties that end up with their fortunes tied to a particular candidate they would rather replace. Such candidates begin, you know, to begin with lack the pedigree or name or recognition to even expect to win a presidential or gubernatorial or even a senatorial seat. So if it sounds ridiculous to you that such people become any political party's flag bearer, then you should worry if they're nothing more than a Trojan horse sent into those parties to sometimes maybe even create chaos rather than offer us legitimate candidates that we must consider. But I want you to marinate on that because my name is Mary Anakun and we'll be back tomorrow talking for development. Have a good evening.